So if you're listening to this show today and you've got your own idea and you're thinking of how do I get it into prototype mode or, or do I start a Kickstarter page or an Indiegogo campaign and where do I start? You could find today's conversation quite valuable because today's guest is Tom Hafflinger from Zendo, who many of you will probably already know deliver premium charging products for your everyday adventures. So if you don't have your own company or your own startup, but you do travel around a lot and hate being stuck at an airport with no charge on your phone, the fact that their latest product allows you to charge an iPhone X from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes, maybe that will offer you some value too. Because I love hearing and sharing conversations like this one, as it's so helpful to listeners on their own startup journey, as well as people like me that just love a nice new shiny gadget for their travel bag. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to California so we can speak with Tom Hafflinger from Zendo. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Tom. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are? And what hey, you Neil. do? Uh, my name is Tom Hafflinger. I'm the founder and chief marketing officer for Zendor. We make electronics with a focus on durability, style, and user-centric design. So every startup and every new product has a story behind it. So I want to delve a little bit deeper into yours. Can you tell me a little bit more about Zendor and also what put you on this journey? Yeah, 2003, I started going to Menlo College. And at that time, there were some Chinese exchange students, and one of them was Brian Liu, our co-founder. Uh, we became friends. He taught me Chinese. I taught him better curse words in English than the ones he knew. And uh, we formed a friendship based on that, and we kept in touch after college. And one day he said, hey, why don't we start a company? So every time I get on a plane, I look at the Uber cool travel adapters in the in-flight magazine and think, should I? <laughs> That's often as far as I get. So I'm curious, I mean, what was the inspiration behind the Passport Pro Universal Travel Adapter, which I've read has been called the world's safest global travel adapter? And also right. maybe just set the scene a little and tell anyone that's not heard of it uh, uh, what it's about and what to expect. Yeah, so Passport Pro is the follow-up to Passport Classic which was our first travel adapter. Where it stands apart is, uh, in addition to USB PD output for some of the newer devices, it can output up to 30 watts and three USB ports. Uh, we also offer one-handed operation, a push-button resetting fuse, and as for safety, it has a ground connection, which the previous Passport didn't have. So we are going to have people listening in many countries all over the world. Am I right in saying that this will fit any plug socket? Is that right? Almost any plug socket. Um, it's hard to get a truly all-in-one solution because there are a lot of uh, different connectors out there and also different regulations on uh, how you can manufacture something and where you can use and sell it. So there will be people listening on their own startup journey too or have their own ideas or their own concepts. So can I ask, once you had the idea for this... How do you go about creating the product itself? Well, you, you start with an idea that's more or less an assumption about what's needed in the market. And um, throughout the uh, formation and, and operating of a business, I think the, the biggest thing that you need to do is communicate. And uh, so we started with our assumption about what's needed, but then we had focus groups and we asked friends and family members, preachers, teachers, you know, anyone who would... Uh, give us their time um, to see where we were on the right track, where we were a little off base with our assumptions, to make sure that we were creating something uh, that people really wanted. And once you're at that point, do you then get the prototype, do you get that done overseas? What happens next? For some of our latest products, what we've been doing is partnering uh, with a design firm locally um, that has been sort of crafting our ideas into something real. And then they take it to the uh, manufacturer um, we have a whole process of sorting out and selecting who we want to manufacture it with. And uh, they do the communication. More and more, though, we're, we're bringing the design over to our side as, as we've been capable to bring more people on board. Um, it's, a, it's a very hands-on uh, sort of personal experience to, to take an idea and create something and then uh, find that people actually bring it into their homes, bring it with them traveling. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of steps involved. 